Why StreamYard is better than Zoom when it comes to live streaming interviews and conversations. I get asked this question all the time. People approach me saying, I use Zoom for my interviews and I've heard about StreamYard. Is it a fit for me? What should I be considering when it comes to live streaming my conversations or my interviews? I recently created a video comparing StreamYard and Zoom for podcasters. And I think the dynamics between podcasters and live streamers is very different. There's pros and cons to both platforms if you're podcasting. So if you are podcasting, I suggest taking a look at that video. Uh, the link's in the description. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be talking about why StreamYard is better for live streaming your conversations and interviews. So let me share my screen here and show you what it's about. I'll go real quick just to show you. I've been using StreamYard for a while. I've got some past broadcasts here. So all of these have been multicasted. So I sent it to my personal Facebook, my, pers my Facebook page for the podcast, the YouTube channel, and the Twitch channel. So the main thing that you want to take note of when you log into StreamYard is its mul multicasting capabilities. Because that's one big differentiator between Zoom and StreamYard uh, when it comes to the live streaming. Uh, so if you click Destinations, you can see all the places that I currently have set up so that when I go live, I have the option to go live to all of these places. You can even connect it with Restream, and then Restream can then distribute it out to their multicasting platform. I don't use Restream. I tested it and decided to just use StreamYard, so I got the higher tier plan that lets me go to five destinations because I saw some limitations uh, between StreamYard and Restream for what I was using it for, which if you have questions around that, let me know in the comments and I can create a video there. But overall, this is where you can stream to from StreamYard. Uh, you can go to your Facebook page, Facebook group, Facebook profile, LinkedIn page, LinkedIn profile if you're approved for LinkedIn, YouTube, Periscope, Twitch, Restream, and you can even integrate with a custom RTMP. Now, before I go deeper into this, I'll just show you real quick uh, the different tiers uh, for the pro programs that StreamYard has. Uh, so they've got the free tier, a basic, and a professional. Um, I'm just going to talk between the basic and professional here. And the main difference for me, because I don't uh, stream for long periods of time, because you can do a four-hour stream versus an eight-hour stream on the professional, but the multi-stream destinations, uh, you can do two with the basic, and you can do five with the professional. And when I was comparing this uh, with, with Restream, I was thinking about you know using one of them for Restream and then the other one wherever else I wanted here, and then using Restream to go other other places. Uh, but I saw some limitations, and I just went with getting the professional plan, and that's been working well for me. You know, when you combine the cost of getting the basic plan here and the cost of Restream, if you're going to Restream, you know, you're sort of saving a little bit of money uh, by just going professional here and, and avoiding uh, Restream. Uh, real quick, I just want to say that if you sign up for StreamYard as a result of watching this video or watching some of my videos, then please consider using the affiliate link in the description. Uh, I think you get a free 10 or $20, and then I get... 10 or $20 if you sign up. It's not significant, but if you're already going to sign up, then it's the best promo code that they have out there is using an affiliate from someone else that already has it. And then it just helps me out a little bit, which I really appreciate. Now, if I go into a broadcast studio, uh, it's not showing my camera right now because I'm using an OBS. If I log into here first and then turn on OBS, then the camera will work. But this is what it looks like when you're in the back end this is where you'll do the conversation with the guest. And here you can see there's different formats for the screen. Right now it's set up for one person, but you can click this. And what it'll do is if you have two people, it'll do split screen. Sorry about that. Up and down. Uh, if you have three people, it'll split three. And you can have up to six people on the screen. You can also have a little bit of a border, so it's more of like a standard box on both sides with some emptiness on the top and bottom. So there's different formats you can do here, and it's really easy to switch between them. Uh, this little box that you see here on these three, that's if you're sharing your screen. So I could be here with my video, and I could be sharing my screen here. I could be here with the video with other people in here with us, and be sharing a screen so we're screen. And this has been helpful because I interview influencers on my podcast and there's been a couple instances where I'm diving into the origin story behind a YouTuber. And he talks about the first video he ever created. And on the spot during the interview, I can go up to the browser, go to his YouTube channel, 
sort by the earliest episode, pull it up, and really quickly on the fly, I'm able to pull that first uh, video up on the screen, even while he's still talking about that. And then he's like, oh, yeah, that's it. And then we can talk about it live on screen. And it just makes doing all this really simple. Uh, doing that on StreamYard is a little bit more difficult. It's, it's possible to, to do, of course. Uh, some other things to take note of is the sidebar here where there's comments. When people leave comments, uh, they come up here, and then you can pull them over on the screen. Uh, I pulled one of here. So this is what it looks like to do the interview. Uh, this is live streamed to YouTube. And I just want to show you what some of it looks like. Uh, we've got our names at the bottom. When someone leaves a comment, this is what I'm showing you here. When someone leaves a comment, it comes up in the sidebar here. And then when I click it, it brings it to the screen. So it shows that, you know, Joey from Facebook left this comment. And it, it's on, so sometimes you can see comments flowing through, and if you don't feel like it's something you're going to bring on the screen, you don't have to. And you have a choice between letting the guest see these comments. I have that turned off so the guest doesn't get distracted. And if I see a comment that is asking a question to the guest, I can bring that up on the screen as well. So let me just play this for a second so you can see what it looks like to be engaging with some of the audience. Here's someone else that tuned in, Comic Crusaders. And you can see that this one is coming from YouTube. So you're pulling in comments from multiple sources and then pulling them on the screen. That is a lot more power than Zoom has when engaging with a live audience. So you can imagine if you are streaming to Facebook. So you can imagine if you're streaming to your Facebook page, your YouTube channel, your Twitch channel, and it allows me to really engage with the audience live. So it's a lot more powerful when it comes to live streaming in comparison to Zoom. Another differentiator I wanted to talk about is uh, you can create banners. So this is just a custom one. It says waiting to start. So if I'm in here and I'm waiting for the guests to show up, I can just click waiting to start and I can just put that banner on and off. And you can create new banners. It's really easy. You can say hello, add the banner. And now I've got another banner here. So you can make banners that are related to what it is that you're talking about as talking points. Um, I have some of those. I've got a whole folder full of banners that I use for my podcast. And I can pull them up when the guest brings up something that I want to show on the screen. You can also do some branding so you can create custom overlays. Like that. You can create other overlays. Oh, let me turn the banner off. So here you can see it's got some overlays that you can do, uh, which you can create your own very easily. If someone leaves you a comment on Twitch, you can go down here and there's a little drop down on the side where you can click it and say, I want to go to all destinations, YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, or whatever platform you want. And you can just reply to the one person on the one platform. If someone comes in on Twitch and I'll be like, oh, hey, you know, John, thanks for tuning in and just send it to Twitch. That way people on YouTube aren't saying, hey, John, thanks for tuning in when John's not even on YouTube, he's on Twitch. So those are some of the big reasons why StreamYard is better than Zoom when it comes to live streaming your interviews and conversations online. Uh, I'm just going to talk about a couple of downsides real quick. Uh, I think it's worth mentioning. Um, they're not deal breakers for me, obviously, because I'm still using StreamYard. But let me share my screen again. I recently had Daniel J. Lewis from the podcast called The Audacity to Podcast. He has over 500 episodes on how to podcast, how to overcome the barriers of podcasting, the technical parts of podcasting, different microphones, everything related to podcasting. So I feel a little bit bad that I messed up the audio situation with this interview because uh, he's such a seasoned, experienced podcaster. But I wanted to show you one downside to StreamYard because I made a mistake recently and I want to share it with you guys. Because... StreamYard only gives you one audio track. It's very difficult to fix in post-editing, uh, just raising the volume for me, but not the guest. So let me show you what that sounds like. So what would be uh, some of the biggest advice you have for a new podcaster, maybe someone that hasn't started yet or has just started uh, that like early phase? Uh, and we can just start the conversation around that. Yeah, 
The biggest thing that I see holding up people who want to start a podcast is perfectionism. And they may not even be perfectionists, but there does tend to be this thing when we get into podcasting that we start obsessing over, oh, what's the best media host? What's the best microphone? What's the best this or that? Because I want to make sure I get the best thing for my podcast. But the most important thing is really to get your podcast going and to focus on the content, what you want to talk about on your podcast. So to make it easy for people who are starting their podcast, so if you want to check out this interview, it's, it's on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's a 30 minute long interview, just deep diving into advice for podcasters. But I just wanted to make the point that my volume was really low, whereas the guest volume was higher. And if we did this conversation on Zoom, where Zoom allows you to have two separate audio tracks, let me turn it back to me. If we did it on Zoom where we did two separate audio tracks, I could very easily just raise the volume for my audio track and then make it level across the board. But because I used StreamYard, I can't do that. It's one audio track with both my audio and my guest's audio combined. So I can't just say, okay, raise the volume for me in post-editing and not for the guest because if I raise the volume for me, it's going to raise the volume for the guest. It's all mixed in together. That's one downside to StreamYard is it has one audio track. The other downside to StreamYard is it doesn't integrate with a calendar software. So in Zoom, uh, if you're familiar with Zoom, it integrates with Calendly. Uh, so you can use a calendar software, put in your availability, send it out to a guest and say, hey, choose a date and time that works for you. Once they choose it, Zoom automatically creates a unique link, sends it to them, does the reminders, adds it to their calendar. Everything is handled on the back end. But with StreamYard, uh, even if you use Calendly, they can use Calendly to book it, but they're not going to get the link to the conversation. Like Zoom sends the link automatically and creates a link automatically. StreamYard, you have to go in the system let me show you. Actually, I'll explain to you my process because I think that can help you. What I do is I'll create a new broadcast. And normally, you know, I would want to put everything here where I have like the title of the conversation, description, introducing the guest and talking about everything. But because I'm just trying to send the link and I don't know as much about the guest yet, they just booked uh, to schedule a conversation and usually I do research on the guests so I can put some relevant content there. I won't uh, send it out to any of these destinations. I'll just put a placeholder here. And what I usually do is just put the date. So I'll do, let's say, uh, June 1st. And I'm interviewing Tony Robbins. And when I create this broadcast, it's not going to create any instances at these places. If I did a temporary name and I put it to YouTube, it's going to create a, you know, a scheduled event on YouTube saying this jibber jabber. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to talk about with Tony Robbins because I don't know enough about him. I need to research him and get a relevant title. Uh, so I'm putting this as a placeholder and that's going to give me the, at least the link to send to the guest. And once you create it, you'll see there's a link up here. So you can copy that and send it to the guest. That's all you need. You don't even have to enter the broadcast studio to send the link, it's gonna be up here. Uh, it took me a little bit to figure that out, but basically, uh, if you enter the broadcast studio, you can hit the invite button at the bottom here, and it's gonna show you the same exact link that's up here. So if you have a guest that requests to book a time with you and you just wanna very quickly send the link and then go back and edit everything later and then schedule it to your social media, uh, this is the process that I do, is I just get the link and then I'll send it to the guest. Those are the main downsides when comparing Zoom and StreamYard uh, for live streaming is the fact that you can't have two separate audio tracks, which isn't necessarily as important for live streaming. You just want to make sure that the audios are aligned uh, so that everyone tuning in for the live stream uh, is hearing level audio. And if you're using that for other purposes, then post-editing becomes important, and then being able to have the two separate audio tracks is important in that instance. So when it comes to the purely live streaming, it's not a downside. And then the clunkiness of scheduling with guests. Uh, if you're doing a live stream show or live streaming and it's only you or it's you and someone else and you have a consistent time, then it's not a big deal because you're not dealing with calendar software and integrations with other systems. Uh, but for me, because I am interviewing other people, they're signing up through Calendly, I have to create a, a StreamYard instance, send them the link separately. Sometimes they may see the emails coming from Calendly, but then maybe not see the email from StreamYard. It hasn't been too big a deal for me. It's more the issue that it's an extra step on my end. I have to 
go into StreamYard, create the instance, send them the link as a separate email, and maybe even send that link again as a follow-up right before the interview to make sure that they didn't miss it or that they, they don't have to dig through their emails to find it again. Was this video helpful for you? Uh, let me know by hitting the like button, leave a comment. Let me know what the biggest takeaway was for you or something that was new that you learned. Or let me know uh, some questions that have come up. You know, I've, I didn't dig into everything. I could go deeper in a lot of directions. And if there was a question that came up or something that you wanted to see uh, more clearly defined, let me know in the comments. And it could be you know, related to this video or related to podcasting or social media in general. Uh, but just let me know in the comments what questions you have, and I'd love to make some follow-up for you. Uh, but before I let you go, uh, because you're a content creator, I thought I'd just share with you real quick what my podcast is about, because I think it could be a good resource uh, for you. So this is my website. It's called Why Influence, whyinfluence.com. And what I do is I interview influencers, and I ask them why they're sharing, what kind of barriers they've overcame to sharing, how they overcame those barriers, what kind of tips and tricks they have to help others increase their influence, uh, specifically on the platform where they've had success. Uh, so t just to walk you through a couple of guests I've had, uh, this is Aaron Walker. He's been a podcast guest on over 1,800 episodes. He's been on, on Entrepreneur on Fire, which is one of the largest entrepreneur podcasts, five times as a guest. Uh, so he's really mastered the being a guest on other podcasts uh, sort of way of influencing. Uh, Mark Metry has a really uh, successful podcast. He's got tens of millions of downloads. Uh, Jason Horton, he's got a, a podcast of millions of downloads, but he also has a half a million followers on TikTok. Uh, so he's very familiar with how to grow your audience on pretty much every platform. Uh, Ruben, he's an Instagrammer. He does graffiti art, so he'll do graffiti on walls and, and share that on his Instagram. Uh, he shared a, a story where he was doing graffiti on a wall. He said, you belong here. And he came back the next day to continue working on the artwork. And someone walked by while he was working on it and said, you know, last night I was going to kill myself. But because I saw your artwork, uh, it was so powerful to me that I decided not to. So you never know what kind of influence you're going to have or unintended consequences you're going to have. Uh, so, you know, Ruben is literally saving lives with his influence. And of course, I get opportunities to interview uh, some of the leaders in the industry. So I've had Daniel J. Lewis, uh, Dave Jackson, uh, Chris Kramitsas, those are some of the three really big people in the podcast community. I've had all kinds of influencers on my show. So right now I'm pretty immersed in the world of just talking to other influencers about why they're doing it, how they're doing it, what's working, what's not working, how do you grow your influence. Uh, so if there's any kind of questions that come up uh, that you'd like me to answer, then go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Uh, I hope that you subscribe to the channel and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for tuning in.